agents, it's Tristan, and I've got Ro with us. Ro is out of the Sotheby's office in San Francisco. He's got a lot of offices out there. And also was doing Million Dollar Listing in San Francisco, which, you know what, we should all sign a petition to bring season two back. Right, Ro? You know what? I'll be the first person to sign that. <laughs> that was a good season, man. Yeah, it was fun. It could have been better. Yeah, well, season two, right? That's what we're waiting for. Anyways, we've got Ro with us. And we're waiting. Cool. Yeah, there you go. We're, uh, we're waiting for Steve Wayne from Prospect now to come in. But in the meantime, what we will be talking about is what Ro uses to be able to target sellers before his competition. This way, if he's mailing to them, if he's contacting them, he knows that they're possibly going to move before any other agent. And that, to me, is, is really super amazing. I want us. Hey, guys. <laughs> What's up, dude? You jumped in. I can't believe it. We oh, my God. Out. That was so weird. I'm on a Chromebook, and I use Zoom all the time on Chromebooks. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess for whatever reason, it was, you know, like the join button in the little window? It was, like, disabled. Well, they did just update Zoom this morning, so that could be it, dude. Oh, interesting. So, how's it going, Tristan? Good, buddy. Good. We just uh, announced Ro, and I'm glad you're you're in. By the way, his name is not Elizabeth. It's Steve, and he's the creator <laughs> of Prospect Now, which is what we're going to be talking about today, man. Where are you located, and how do you guys know each other? Well, we're both in Northern California. Hey, Ro, how you doing? Good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you yeah so i'm in uh, northern california in los altos um yeah really really you're in the east bay right yeah i'm in the east bay i'm in danville sweet he's in danville a little bit a little bit south from you but ro you you created prospect now and this is what ro is using i wanted to get into the way that ro farms and the way that you, Ro uses the product first so that we're able to see uh, how we can use it as real estate agents. Because I'm a farmer. I first discovered your product from Dan Beer out in San Diego. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he was the first person to tell me about that one, and then it grew from there. But, Ro, uh, can you tell us how you're farming and what you're doing exactly to, to be able to pinpoint these people before they list their homes? Absolutely. Now you guys are going to meet Diego Perez, director of operations. This guy is the creative tank between uh, us and our clients. So I'm going to let him share a little bit with you guys about how we're using uh, the product now because I'm out in the field, man. I'm out finding buyers and sellers. Nice. And uh, uh, you guys come back and forth. Yeah, Diego's running uh, back end stuff with us on Prospect Now and, and using the product, and you'll kind of give you a little bit of idea on what we're doing creatively in order to be able to pinpoint some people. It's not the only product we use. Um, we're kind of new to it. I think we've been using it for maybe about four months, five months now. Okay. And uh, it's a work in progress and we're getting better at it. And, you know, working with Elizabeth very closely on, on how to be able to utilize the tool in the best way and, and uh, make it rain. <laughs> so well, you know how to do that, that right? <laughs> All right, what's up, dude? It's your turn. Hey, what's up, guys? So Prospect Now, uh, it's like Rose said, we've been using it for a little bit now. And, um, you know, after meeting with Elizabeth, I definitely think that it's one of the platforms that uh, we'll continue to be used um, for a long time. Just because, you know, of, the, of how easy everything is, how easy you guys make everything. The Diego? Personality. Can you can you start a little bit before that though, so that the the audience can understand uh, where you're targeting, how you create the postcards, and then uh, how you use them to really pinpoint the right seller. So, right now, are are you creating the postcards from from your computer? Do you use a company to outsource that? Do you design them? Tell us about that process. Actually, what we do for any type of postcards, we actually get everything from Sotheby's from the company because they're really strict on what can go on there and uh, you know what what we're actually marketing. So a lot of the stuff that we get is from Sotheby's, 
Um, we use Prospect now a lot of the times, you know, when we close a deal, we will go on, you know, looking up the address for a property that we just sold. And then we go around it, you know, for example, like three miles around it. Um, and, you know, we'll either do a just sold or, um, you know, we're really trying to get more into, uh, we're trying to create a very, very uh, hefty door knocking campaign because we believe that here where we are, you know, that is actually going to help us a lot more than just mailing someone because just mailing someone, you know, they're probably getting bombarded with mail from other realtors in the same area. And, you know, the town that we're in, Danville, it's a very old school town. Um, a lot of the properties here uh, are older. They have a lot of older people living there. So um, that's kind of the, the old way of, of doing it, you know, just sending out mailers and, and hoping for the best. But, you know, we're really trying to focus on the properties that we do sell, the properties that, that Row uh, represents clients for, we mm -hmm. want to get around those markets. And Prospect Now has really helped us do that because, you know, instead of going and door knocking blindly, we can go and we can locate the people that are more, that are most likely to sell. And um, I definitely think that, you know, it's, it's helped us a lot. And, and not only that, but I think that, you know, the company search is one of the things that, we've used probably more than the probably more than the actual um you know than than this like looking up the the addresses or looking around the addresses but um mm -hmm. i definitely think that that it's just something that um, oh, we're so still cool. continuing to experiment with and we're just you know taking it day by day all right, so I have a question for you. There, there's a couple of questions as to what, what tools you use, but before we get into that, uh, right now in regards to farming, where you guys are mailing and door knocking, is there anything else that you guys are doing uh, all together in the farming process that, that you call like the, the farming? Because like for us, for instance, what we're doing on our end, when we're farming out to, to Malibu and to these different areas is, uh, we, we have a company that creates the, the templates for us. We kind of template it out for a whole year. And we, we use call action as a phone number so that we're able to trace who calls in. Right? We do door knock as well. And, but we're also automating part of the process in when we get their phone numbers or emails, right? We're dropping voicemails. We're texting a video, email, video, text. And then we've also added now, prospect now, uh, which allows us to to be able to save, I think, save money. So we're not just kind of spreading it out everywhere. We're really pinpointing on the exact sellers uh, we think, based on the information that we're getting, are going to sell next, right? So what are the tools right now that you're using all together to farm? And what's the process look like that you've created or that you're using? Yeah, so, so Diego, just a quick question on that to follow up on Tristan's comment is, do you guys use the phones much? Like, are you doing outbound marketing on the phones as well? Or, it, you know, like, as Tristan was kind of mentioning, it's like an all of the above approach? Or, or what's your kind of, what's your main, um, you know, uh, approach? Yeah, so I think it's a combination of both, but we've sort of been doing, uh, um, okay, so we've, so with Sotheby's being with Sotheby's, we're on a database called Resora, and I'm not sure if it's available for other brokerages, but it's something that works really well for us because um, not only can we call, can we get the phone numbers from Prospect Now and call and prospect that way with cold calls and, and uh, you know, eventually warm calls and all that type of stuff, but you know, with Resora, there are retargeting campaigns that we can do, that we can create in Resora. So, for example, like, I will look at a farm, you know, I'll, I'll look around a property that we just sold, for example, three miles. Um, I will get all the emails, and then all of the emails, will upload them, we'll, we'll download them into a CSV form, and then we'll upload into Resora this platform that we use, 
and uh, we can directly target these people whose emails we've uploaded. So, you know, we, we follow them around on the internet a lot. Um, we, you know, it, it's very, it's, it's a very cool thing, you know, because even for myself, I have myself on one of these, uh, you know, buckets that, that um, you know, just to get all the mailers and, and we directly like start, we start following you around online as soon as you open an email from us from Redora, right? So for example, like I'll open this email, I'll get this email and it'll be like a just sold or just listed account. And then, so I'll open that email and it'll attach cookies to my computer. So then for example, I'm, you know, I'm constantly, every day I'm going on Forbes or Wall Street Journal, Curve, you know, all of those websites. And there you have an ad that, you know, we create through Resora and it's an ad that pops up in your browser, you know, just like a typical ad. And, um, you know, it just has Rose information on there, phone number, website, a picture of a really nice property that we can sold. And that link just takes you directly to the website, you know, and do, being able to do that, um, you know, getting traffic to the website, you know, we're, we're trying to get more leads that way. We're trying to get more people to inquire and just ask us questions. Um, because that's one of the easiest ways, not one of the easiest ways, but it's one of the most time efficient um, and also I would say cost efficient ways in which we can we can follow people around and we can stay top of mind without having to call them every week or without having to go and door knock them. Um, so that's just one of the things that's worked really well for us. And, we're just lucky enough to work with a company like Sotheby's that provides such an amazing program for us to use. And, um, you know, we're, we're still kind of new to it. Uh, we started using that database in, I want to say May, um, but it's, it's really great, you know, and, and you go on to the homepage and you can see like how many people have seen your ad. You can see how many people have clicked on your ad. So, that's one of the things that you know we we we've been doing a lot and you know it's 2019 so that's probably one of the best ways because i mean everyone's always on their phone you know everyone's always on their computer so um that's probably yeah that's probably what we've been focused on the most all right makes sense uh steve how how are you seeing agents like like rose team here yeah use prospect now because I'm new to it. Um, what we've done though, is we did, we did run our farm, which is about, uh, just one of our farms is 2,200 homes. Uh, somebody was asking us about 2,200 homes, but what we've decided to do is now alternate our, our mailings because we mail two times a month, right? So one of those mailings is going to be to my whole farm. And then the other mailing in that month is only going to be specifically to those that your company prospect now right. identifies as the high, right. high point sellers. Yeah. How, do you, how do you see people using the product uh, like, like Rose team? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good question. Um, you know, here, here's what I've seen. So just to give you a little background is so Tristan, I started in commercial real estate. So I did a lot of cold calling. Right. And um, that's kind of, you know, we would call like apartment building owners and, you know, commercial property owners and what have you. And, um, you know, as you can imagine, right, like what you realize is like that marketing effort is actually, in my opinion, it's the most effective. And the folks that are willing to kind of get out in front of people, Rose is a great example of this. I mean, obviously, the, the guy's done a tremendous job of marketing himself on, you know, million dollar listing. Um, but also not afraid to go out into the field, right, and talk to people and do his thing. Um, and so what we found is that we can kind of like direct our customers to those higher probability sellers based off of a lot of information. And then they can kind of like use what they're used to using in terms of their secret sauce um, to be successful. So let me give you an example is what we found is you know, with a lot of this stuff, you know, it sounds kind of like buzzwordy, right? Like predictive analytics and machine learning and all this, all this kind of stuff. But what we've been doing, we've been doing it about three years. And the key to that, 
Tristan, is back testing, right? And in other words, um, it's almost like, you know, a politician makes a promise and then three, it's three years ago and nobody ever goes back and checks if they actually ever did anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's what I was talking to a friend of mine earlier on today about. Man. It's like there's never any like, well, did that policy actually work, right? Um, and so we're a big believer in kind of going backwards and looking at, okay, which properties did we identify as, as better candidates and what happened with those? And so we publish that information um, and, you know, it's, it's actually, you can go onto our website where our ROI calculator is um, and look at properties that sold. Did we predict that they sold? Yes or no? And you can kind of see the results. So what happens is over time, we get better and better and better at identifying the likely sellers. And I think Dan Beer, like you probably saw like what, what, you know, he had this book, right, that he was like, okay, I want to get this out to all these folks. But he, what I found that what he did that I think was really smart was that he said, okay, about a third of the properties in a farm are what we identify as more likely to sell, right? So what I've noticed is that what, what, what you know, hard charging agents are doing is they're not saying, okay, I'm just going to market to that third. What they're doing is they're expanding their footprint and saying, okay, I'm, you know what? I wasn't going into Palo Alto before, but you know what? I can do that now because my marketing cost is the same. Why not, right? Become an expert in other areas. Um, you know, like for me, like when I was in, when I was in commercial, I spent like nine months of my life researching all this data and getting to know my farm. And then my first listing was across the bay, um, you know, in a completely different area. And I realized, man, I got to be an expert everywhere. You know, the specialist thing is important, but we have the tools now in the tech to be able to be specialists in a broader area. So those are the kind of things that, you know, we're seeing that, um, you know, that work pretty well. And I do think, and Ro and I have talked about this, there's, there's kind of no substitute for just being good at what you do, right? And going out there and and talking to people and putting yourself out there. All we're doing is we're, we're separating the wheat from the chaff, right? And we're doing it in a really cost-effective way that enables agents to scale. Got it. It makes that makes sense. Uh, Ro, uh, over the last few years, as you've as what was that, Ro? Sorry, I think Ro was. I wanted to piggyback off what you just said right now because I thought it was actually very important. Um, look, we're, we're in a different environment, right? Real estate is something where you don't necessarily need to recreate the wheel. It is what it is. But then again, you know, that, that idea of, hey, I need to be a 35-year veteran of blank specific zip code and that's all I work and I go I'm a mile deep and I'm only an inch wide that concept is kind of like going out the window with right forms of technology with the go-getter agents that are willing to do the work willing to do the research that are bringing in massive value to their clients you don't necessarily have to niche into one specific area anymore the way that we run the habibi group i mean very like this is point in fact right we work san francisco marin county the east bay silicon valley all the way to napa right how do we do that? How are we doing the numbers that we're doing? We don't have a niche. Every single time when I meet a seller, they say, hey, why, why shouldn't I go with Tom, Dick, or Harry? You know, they've been here for 20 years. Well, you know, you have to think about how you're going to rebuttal that type of a comment, right? Share what type of technology you're using. Share why you're still going to be very well qualified to represent them in that specific market. And when they ask you, have you ever sold a house in Palo Alto before? You say no. I have it, right? How are, how are you going to build enough trust with them to show them like, look, this is a proven strategy that we're using. We sell property throughout the whole entire Bay Area. We don't specialize in one specific area. And this is why we'd be qualified to be able to sell your house, even though we've never sold a house in Palo Alto or Denver or Aspen or blank or blank or blank. You fill in the blank. Yeah, it's such an interesting point, Ro, because you know what I've noticed is, 
Yeah, to your point, Ro, and, and I, I think this is really interesting is, so we've got about 5,000 um, agents on our platform, and I have noticed more and more of those agents um, expanding out, just as, just as Ro described, um, and I don't think this has been like, maybe until we're talking about it like openly right now, I don't, I don't think it's been a necessarily a trend that people have said, oh yeah, you can, you can do this. But I think people are kind of discovering it for themselves that, you know what, I, to, to Rose point, I don't have to be just in this census tract. You know what I'm saying? There's, it's such a big world out there. There's so much opportunity. And you know, um, and there are these creative ways, and that's why I think it's so interesting, Ro, the whole, you know, the way, remember when you were telling me when we were at lunch and you were talking about how when you first started, right, you were like, you saw an opportunity to maybe market in a different way, but you were like, hey, I want to build my business and be the expert, and then when the guys at Million Dollar Listing reached out to you, you were like, hey, I've been waiting for your call, right? Like, that was the, um, <laughs> right? I mean, I love that story. Um and you know that uh, that's an example of being open to doing something because, like, the way I was trained was like literally no joke. Like, you walk the street, you take a picture of every building on your on your. Okay, I'm exaggerating now, but on your Polaroid, and you you put it in your book. You know, and it's like this whole thing. And I mean, man, the the thing is, the real estate agent's not going away. That's not happening. It's a too important of a transaction. And it's one of those things where um, the role is changing, but the technology is just enabling the better agents, right? Um, and so that's, that's what I think is kind of exciting about this time is like Prospect Now as a company is in we have bet, I have bet my kids' college tuition on the fact that the real estate agent is not going away. And my job is to make the real estate agent more successful, right? That, that's, the whole, that's the whole thing. I love that. Um, thank you. Ro, I have a question for you, man. So tell us how you got into the eye of million dollar listing San Francisco. Cause I, I want to know that story. Obviously people had to have at least noticed you right from, from some type of promotion or somebody referred you. Right. So tell us that story because I think it's important for agents to understand that we need to be out there and we need to be open to different situations, right? Sure, well, the first thing is um, these dashingly good looks. You know, <laughs> okay. You're talking about Diego, right? Very <laughs> <laughs> well maintained, okay? Natural oils and berries only. <laughs> wait, wait, bro, bro, on that, on that. Dove, you know Dove, Dove Silverman, right? Dove. He said that Dove. He, still, he still can't grow a beard like yours. So big props. To him. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I can either. Honestly, that thing is a work of art. That's a great beard. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no man, look the the million dollar listing franchise. Let's not forget what it's mainly based about. Okay, it's for you to grow a real estate brand. It's for you to grow a real estate presence using domestic and international television, which is watched in 100 countries by 25 million people just for one season. Now, I could spend a gazillion dollars and work for 30 years, and I still would not be able to build that type of a presence and that type of a brand. So when they were casting for the show and reaching out to every agent under the sun, as you can imagine, it was extremely competitive. Everybody wanted to be on the show. Everybody. Even if they lie to your face and tell you, no, I would never do that show. And my clients would never approve of that. That's bullshit. It's just complete crap. They would, at the drop of a dime, if they got the opportunity and the contract to be on that show, believe me, they would convince anyone they need to convince in order to be on the show <laughs> with them. So, so don't so believe that. How did I, you know what? They literally, like I just said, they went from company website to company website and they just started going down the list and reaching out to every single person that they potentially wanted to have a conversation with. So look, I'm not special in any way, you guys, in no way. They reached out to thousands of agents, 
in the San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley, the East Bay, San Francisco proper, Marin County. They reached out to everyone because they're trying to find three people to fill these roles for a very, very well-produced and extremely high-budgeted show, right? So they reach out to everyone. I don't know how they figure out casting or how they figure out the three people that are going to be on it. You know, I told them that the two people that were on the show with me were extremely bad choices. Um, and <laughs> it kind of played out the way that it did, right? So, but, but Tristan, um, Tristan, it's, it's the beard. Like, come on, bro, don't be shy. It's the beard. <laughs> they reached out to me. Look, I'd only been in the business for like the first call and email that I got from them. I've been in the business. I started in April. I got the call and the email in November. So I was not a million dollar listing agent by any means, right? Lucky thing for me is they went and filmed November. They filmed a million dollar listing in Miami. So they were gone for two years. So in that two and a half years, I was acting as if I was dressing like cast on the million dollar listing show. I was talking like them, negotiating like them, building up my real estate portfolio, selling obviously a lot of property. So by the time they came back and they called me again, it's what Steve said. I said, Hey, I've been waiting for you to call me because yeah, it's a good the story. Last half years I've been crushing. I've been doing really, really good. Now I actually think that I belong on the show. I could be a good addition. I could be an asset to the show and the franchise in general, right? Because NBC Universal owns the show. The show is aired on Bravo and it's filmed and produced by World of Wonder. It's three different layers of corporate red tape and you know executives that are making decisions around this type of a show. So when they reached back out to me, I said, hey, you know, now now I feel very confident that I can be a good asset to the show. And um, you know, thanks to Danielle. King, who's the executive producer of the show, she also produces Million Dollar Listing New York. You know, she gave me the shot. She gave me the chance and she backed me up and, and it was a phenomenal result. And, um, you know, I was voted basically the breakout star of the entire cast, uh, most likable, most likely to refer business to me, most likely to do Dram's Jackson's with me in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so it was a very positive result and, you know, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Nice, dude. I love it. I think it's a uh, it's a testament to your uh, positive attitude and uh, and confidence. I love that. Well, also too, the other thing I think is pretty cool about it, um, Ro, is that you built your business right, um, just doing all the things that you knew you should do prior to that show, right? So that when that you know that you hear that term like you create your own luck kind of a thing. It's like, had you not done those other things, then when that call came in, right, um, you, you still wouldn't have felt like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm ready for this now. But because you built your business and did all those things in the absence of any kind of like, you, you didn't necessarily know you were going to be on the show, right? And then it's just one of those things that further accelerates it, right, which is, which is, is very cool. And I think that kind of, you know, gets back to the tech thing is I think one of the um, – one of the challenges in real estate in general is that, oh, is, is, is technology going to be this like panacea that, you know, saves me from this or that. And I think what I've seen is that um, tools, like just because somebody has a piano in their house, right, doesn't make them a musician. It's the discipline around learning how to play the piano. But the one that has done the, dis done the right stuff and has the Steinway properly tuned it's magic, right? And, uh, and I think that's kind of a, you know, a good analogy for, for how to succeed in this, in this environment. I agree. Ro, what other, what other tech pieces are you using for your business to grow it now? Or uh, if you aren't using as many, what are you doing next to grow to that next level? Uh, that's actually a very good question. So as far as technology, this is in no way um, hyping up Sotheby's International Realty as a brand or anything like that, but you know their suite of services is insane. Just that concept of what he was talking about a moment ago with Resora, that program in general and the technology behind it is an absolute game changer. I've never experienced anything like it. And I've worked at Coldwell Banker before, previews, 
you know, that's where I cut my teeth into the luxury. I worked at Keller Williams before, and I worked at a boutique company in San Francisco. So with us and what we're doing with trying to grow is this. There's an ideal avatar buyer or seller that we specifically want to work with that type of person. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, they have to be cool as shit. Like I got to want to hang out with this person. I got to love this person. I got to want my kids to play and have play dates with this person. Like there is no space in your life or in my life for people that are just toxic, negative energy. They're life suckers. Okay. When I go home and I'm at home and I walk through that front door, I want to be happy. I want to play with my kids. I want to love my wife. Now, if I've been dealing with people that are extremely difficult throughout the entire day that are not realistic buyers or not realistic sellers and their expectations are like, you know, we're magicians or something of that nature and their price deserves $400,000 than their next door neighbor's comp. Those are not people that I want to work with. You know what I mean? And those are people that nobody out there can work with. Like, so that ideal avatar client of who we want to work with, everything that we're doing via prospect now and Resora and everything else that we're using is to locate that person, get onto their radar, have them understand who we are, find us, and then to be able to mesh that whole entire thing together. Right? And yeah. That avatar client for you is going to be different. For Steve is going to be different. And for all the agents that are watching this is going to be different. Take a little bit of time to re reinspect. Okay. Who do I want to work with? Are they, you know, 30 to 40? Are they 40 to 60? What specific industries do they work in? Where do they live? What do they like to do? And then reverse engineer that whole entire prospect, like that, that entire, that whole scenario on how to prospect that specific person, whether that's Facebook targeted ads or Instagram targeted ads or using platforms that your company provides for you, um, using prospect, now using anything that you could possibly use. I don't care what it is. Use whatever is going to work for you, but find that ideal client and just specifically build your business around working with that type of a client and friends and family of that type of client and colleagues of that type of client. Because like attracts like, and people know other people that are just as cool as they are. And why am I going to spend my time, you know, working 70, 80 hour weeks working with people that I just don't want to work with? Like, why do that to myself? I, you know, I don't deserve that. Nobody out here deserves that. This job is hard enough as is. Finding new buyers and new sellers every day is hard enough as is. Don't make your life more difficult working with clients and just don't get it. Dude, that's, that's beautifully said. You have uh, one person here on the Facebook side of this. Joe uh, Shoemaker says, Roe is one of the kindest, most approachable agents I've ever met. I appreciate his friendship and support. So props to you, bro. Yo, nice. I appreciate you, man. And we're going to get lunch or coffee anytime in your town. And I would love to do that. I love that. So very good support. Steve, a question for you off of what Rose said. Uh, is there a section in Prospect Now where we can segment and identify sucky ass sellers by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, actually, oh, there yeah. is. I'm signing up tomorrow. Again. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, you know, I, I do think that um, we're biased towards the listing agent, right? Um, you know, the way I was, the way I was taught. I'm sorry, toward, towards getting listings, right? And, and the way I, I was taught real estate is like the, the beauty of, of getting listings, right? Is that you know, if you're, um, you know, if, if you're this, if the deal blows up, right? The, the seller is left with the property. Uh, the, uh, the buyer is left with his money, right? The listing agent is left with the listing and the buyer's agent is left with fill in the blank, right? And so, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of uh, list and live, right? And so our, our focus is around the seller side of it, right? Now, the irony is sellers can be buyers, right? So there's another whole aspect to it. Um, and that's just how those, you're, you talk about like attracting like, you, you know, you service the seller well, 
And then, you know what I'm saying, right? Then the next, it, it just daisy chains, right? So, but we do, we do, I mean, about two thirds of the properties in our, we have all the properties, right? Um, but about two thirds of them, you know, the data tells us, in fact, I'll try to describe it mathematically. Like, let's say you've got, um, you know, a, a market with a hundred properties, right? And in that market, there were 10 sales, okay? So 10%, right, changed hands. On average, eight or nine of those sales are taking place in the group that we've identified as being likely sellers. So um, what that means is that only one or two of the sales are happening in the other two thirds. So that goes back to this expansion concept, right? And, you know, when, um, you know, Roe was telling me a story where he was going to like research a specific owner that he thought was perfect, right? Remember that story you were telling me, Roe, where that one guy you were, you were trying to research? It's like, yeah. I'll tell you guys, because Steve is like a tech geek, so you guys are not understanding this right, all right? <laughs> Sorry. Program in the easiest way possible, okay? I'll give you a scenario. Okay. You find blank address, okay? Blank address is a drop-dead gorgeous home. You're looking with your buyers, and you guys can't find anything else. You've seen everything else on the market. Every time you guys pass by this, the buyer's like, oh, my God, we just love this house. Um, then you say, well, you know what? Let me find out some more information about this. You go to Prospect Now after you go to title, right? You go to title, you find out, okay, who owns this house? Oh my goodness, it's in an LLC. Damn, we're not gonna be able to find out who this person is at all. Well, you go into Prospect now, and you could find out the phone number and the email for who's running the LLC. Isn't that just like one mm. step closer for you to be able to find out, okay, who do I need to get in contact to understand who owns this house who's the real owner and look it's just a simple conversation hey how's it going bro bb calling from the bb group at golden gate sotheby's international realty look we love your house i'm working with buyers right now they're super well qualified they want to buy the house have you had any thoughts of selling this house well i'm actually glad you called bro because for blank price which basically it's not a comp this is just a price that i'm making up you know, my wife and I and our family, we're willing to part ways with this price. How amazing is it going to be for you to call your client and say, hey, guess what? I know that this is kind of outside of your budget or maybe something that you haven't thought about, but I've reached out to this specific seller on the house that you love and they want blank price for it. Is that something that you're willing to do? Leave it up to them to make decisions. All you are doing is you're being the quarterback. You're putting this whole beautiful like this play together, right? And it has all the different puzzle pieces and you're piecing them all together, but you're opening up opportunities and that's why you're adding value and that's why they've hired you to help them find this specific property. Now, make your life easier by utilizing sources like Prospect Now or whatever else you're using to be able to put those puzzle pieces together so you can actually add value more than Redfin or Zillow or Realtor.com or anything else, okay? Someone is hiring you and willing to let you get paid a commission, 2%, 2.5%, 3% on the selling side by you buy, helping them buy this specific house. You're not gonna get paid otherwise, right? So do everything that you can in your power to be able to locate people, hunt them down, you know, spam them, call them, text them, email them, do whatever the hell you need to do in order to help fulfill the dream of this specific buyer to be able to buy that house. For the sell side, it's a little bit different. I mean, you're using the whole entire platform a completely different way, but that is a great scenario on how to utilize it for a buyer. You know, uh, Ro, it's one thing that I thought of as you were telling that, um, and Tristan, maybe you've experienced this as well, is that one of the things that's interesting about the the whole LLC and trust and all that stuff is that some of your more high-end owners, right, for liability reasons or asset protection or whatever, you're starting to see more and more of those properties 
in LLCs. So when Roe picks up the phone and makes a connection with kind of a real high net worth, um, you know, property owner, it, you know, his competitor, unless they have prospect now, is not making that call. So that's why that call tends to be more welcomed because they're like, oh my God, like Roe, like so, he, he's such a nice guy and, he, and he's calling me about something that is re relevant to me, my, my house. I found people are very receptive, um, you know, in that way. When you're, you're talking, real estate's just one of those things that people love to talk about, right? And for a lot of people, it's their most precious asset, right? Um, and so they'll have those conversations. And as long as you're not a jerk, right? Um, and you come across with a genuine desire to be helpful, people pick up on that. And, you know, I, I, I agree, Ro. I mean, that's like a, a really good technique. That's a really good point. One of the things that Prospect now also has too, to kind of go on what Ro was saying, is that it, it tracks the IP address as well. So in essence, it's like digital door knocking, right? So Ro, when you're saying try to be everywhere, right, where where you're going to be able to find the buyers for for this property, for the seller. Um, Steve, can you explain how digital door knocking works in the sense because it's only – it's only an added value to the brand that you're trying. right, right. And, and I, so the way that works is the 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 seminal part is the data itself, right? So step one, identify that that seller that Roe was talking about, or, or the the sellers like we have a scoring mechanism from one to a hundred, right? Okay. So identify the sellers over eighty, for example. Okay, then you've got maybe a thousand sellers over 80, what this digital door knocking concept is, it's, it's called IP targeting, but I like to think of it as almost like digital direct mail. You know, we're all used to going to a website, we get a cookie, and then they, it follows us around the internet, right? The idea with IP targeting is that nobody has to have ever been to your website or any other website. What we're doing is we say, oh, this home at 123 Main Street is a likely seller, right? More probable than not. We match their physical address to the IP address that they use to browse the web. And then boom, we can display and serve digital advertising to those likely sellers. And they don't, they, they never have to um, have gone anywhere. So um, it's, it's another way you know, it's like Diego was talking about this in the beginning. It's like, all right, if you've got the, the digital piece coming in, you've got your direct mail piece, you're using the phones and your door knocking. And all of those things are centered around properties that our data says are twice as likely to sell. If you do that long enough, you're going to see results, right? You, you know, it's interesting, actually. I saw guys when I was doing uh, commercial real estate, I used to think that sales was a personality thing. Like, uh, you know, it's like, it's an extroverted personality. Um, you know, it's a certain type of person. And, you know, I can kind of, I get the sense all of us on the call are kind of maybe more that extroverted type of personality. Um, but I saw guys that just quiet, but bulldogs, right? Workers, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, man, that guy's got, the personality of like a dead fish. I don't know how he this, you know, he's, but he just keeps doing his thing. And all of a sudden you're going, dude, that guy's making a million dollars a year, you know? Um, and so I do think it's not, it's not uh, personality dependent. It's process. It's process dependent. And, uh, and that's what makes it such a attainable, albeit hard, uh, but attainable career, you know, successful career choice for a lot of people. That's so key, dude. So just so we understand how the system works and what sure. Rome is using now uh, with Prospect Now, when we go in and we take a look at an area, let's say we pick an area that has, uh, it's a track and we pick an area that has 2,000 homes, does, does Prospect Now identify like the top 5%, top 10, top 20, or how does it work so that we know who to target it's, um, you know, I could actually share my screen and show you what it looks yeah. like. Is that a good idea? Yeah, let's do that, dude. I would love that. 
Okay. All right. So um, let me do this. I don't know if we can see what what Rowan did. Yeah, exactly. I, I I know I know what you're saying. It's like a visual. So can you see my screen right here? Let me let me move my other screen. Give me a sec. Yeah, I see it. Perfect. Okay. So I just drew a polygon here, right on this on the map. So yeah. I got 79 properties. So all I have to do is just click here and say, okay, status is likely sellers, right? Yeah. Um, and then click the search button. And what you're going to see is that it's going to go from 79 to 28. Wow. Okay. So, so those 28, now that if you, if we scroll down, you can see the scores. So Tristan, like green, green is good. Yellow is moderate. And orange is, you know, semi-moderate, but they're all more likely to sell than um, than the the other, you know, uh, fifty, right, or fifty-one. Uh, so, so I like to just sort by the color, and then just go down the list, right? And you can click, okay, here's the first guy. You can click his phone number and or get his email, um, and you know, when you do that. We're looking through all the different databases. Okay, and here's here's the phone number. Here's his name, um, and then we can see all the information about the property. Um, and you know what, what's also interesting that I think Diego was talking about was that we also know if they own a business, right? And we know if it's. It, let's see if I can find somebody in an LLC here. Um, Let's see. So here we go. So here's Methuselah LLC, right? This is exactly what Roe was talking about. So the managing partner, what does that mean to me, Methuselah LLC? It means nothing, right? And I, so Tristan, I like lived this problem, right? When I was, when I was doing commercial, because everything's in an LLC. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like, oh my God, like, great. I got this LLC. I, it, I can guarantee you this. If you pick up the phone and you say, hey, can I talk to the owner of Meth Methuselah LLC? Click, right? I mean, they're, they're not going to, you're not going to get through. But if you pick up the phone and you say, hey, is Greg in? Um, you know, you got a shot. Uh, and, and it sounds like that's what you did, Ro, right? Is that you, um, you have the, the, the individual's name? Yeah. So... Look, I knew the individual who, who was that owned the spot. So just being able to hunt them down, um, Elizabeth takes just all the credit for that. She helped me find that person. And uh, Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, and if it wasn't for James Stewart, who works at a title company, introducing me to Elizabeth, I would never even know about Prospect Now as a platform. So, you know, shouts out to James Stewart for introducing us to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is one of the hardest working gals I know out there. And, She's been extremely helpful. Like we'll have meetings with her every couple of weeks and she'll just say, Hey, are you using this? Do you know how do you do this? And like, Oh, you know, this is the best way. So like you walking us through this right now, I'm like thinking to myself, how much easier do you want your life to get as a realtor? Like, why don't you just pull up 2000 houses and say, Hey, I only want to see green. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And door knock only the green. Like why, why not? It's crazy to me. So, you know, for one little exercise people can do that's that are on the, the webinar today, um, which I think is, is just kind of fun, is you can go to this on our website. There's a section here called the ROI calculator. You scroll down to the bottom and you'll see it here. It says ROI calculator. If you click on that, you can actually see what the data looks like and the probabilities are in your county. So, Ro, are you in are you in Contra Costa or which which counties do you mostly work in? Yeah, just punch in Costa Contra Costa just because I'm in, I'm interested to see what it's gonna. Play. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go here to Contra Costa, okay, and then we'll do this in real time. This will be kind of fun. So, you know, let's say you know I, I'm gonna make up a number here. What's your annual marketing spend? Let's let's say you spend ten grand a year on direct mail. Maybe Ro, maybe you spend more. I don't know. What, what do you spend, Ro? Well, we put 20% back into the business. So it's all it's all on different avenues, right? We have uh, the targeted ads, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we are now advertising on YouTube. And, um, and uh, that, that's, that's smart, the reinvestment. So 
you know, stick with your 10K. That looks good. Yeah, okay. So let's say, you know, and let's say, you know, an agent's doing like a deal a month. Let's say 12 deals. And obviously, row in our neck of the woods, um, the average deal size is a lot more than 300 grand, right? Um, so maybe, you know, let's, let's say maybe, uh, you know, 1.5 million is like an average uh, deal size. So what we can do, this, this is the fun part, right? Is, is we can look at Contra Costa County and look at what the potential additional commissions could be, right? Um, for an agent using and marketing to those greens, right? Remember the green ones. So if we look at like, um, say, say uh, Contra Costa, I've got this sales turnover right, number right here. So what we're, we're calculating that about 3.9% of the properties in Contra Costa sold in the last year. Um, but if you look at the properties that are green, right, the likely sellers, those guys are turning over at almost double, right? based off of our historical measurements. So, so it's kind of a, the fun metric is say, okay, it's a 72% increase. So, you know, conceivably one could go from making 432 grand a year to 744 if they focus the equivalent marketing, right? At that, you know, at the greens, right? At the likely sellers. Um, so yeah. uh, Rose got a minute left before we do a hard stop, but um, sure. so last question here, there are greens and then I see yellows and then oranges. When we're mailing, should we go, because uh, I remember I alternate, uh, should we focus in on the greens, yellows, and part of the oranges or what? You know what I would do? I would do any of them. I would do them all. Um, because like, if you look here, I'll, I'll show you right here. Here's the breakdown of greens, yellows, and oranges in Contra Costa County. Right. So the greens are a relatively small and coveted group. Right. Um, and but you can see all of them together, Tristan, is still only about a third. So I would recommend doing all of them because they're all more likely to sell than the grays. Right. Um, so that answer my question, I'm going to do a snapshot of that and then we're going to have to say. Bye. We can do a part two to this because I know Ro's got a hard stop in a minute. Uh, Ro, dude, thanks for being on. Diego, thanks for your knowledge. Appreciate that. And Steve, if anybody has questions for Steve or Ro, uh, they are now in lab codes, so you could just tag them. And I also put a link to Prospect now if you want to take a look at that. Ro, anything you want to add before you leave? Um, Steve, I'm heading to Palo Alto, man. I'm pitching seven listings right now at 2 o'clock. So if you want to grab lunch or something like that, let me know. Are you serious? Oh, that sounds great. That's I'll awesome. text you when we jump off. That's awesome. Um, apart from that, super thankful for this guy right here. He's helping with everything, literally running the ship. Uh, we're having a just absolutely phenomenal year, and we plan on increasing. And if there's anyone out there right now that's watching this, no bullshit. If I could help you in any way, um, you guys will probably put some links on how to get in touch with me. So yep. um, reach out. I'm always happy to help. Appreciate it, bro. Thanks for being on, man. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Steve. Okay, thanks a lot, Tristan, for arranging this. This is great. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye, guys.